Hi everyone! Today we are going live for our next Facebook project demonstration. Today we're going to be doing Ojo de Dios weavings, which are God's eye weavings. This is a summer camp favorite. You may have done it before. Let me show you. This is what I'm talking about. So we're going to be doing these God's eye weavings and I'm going to jump right into telling you what materials you should have on hand if you want to do the project with me. It's just two different materials. So you need some dowels and some yarn. I would recommend a few different colors of yarn or um, like fabric or twine, whatever you have. And then for dowels, I wanted to show you a few different options. So right here, the sample, I actually used bamboo barbecue skewers and I trimmed off the tip. So here you can see I've got like a skewer and I um, took my scissors and I trimmed off the tip and that's what I used for this guy. Now I also worked on a sample yesterday that I used these 12 inch dowels. So this I think is like a quarter inch dowel maybe but um, if you have any small um, dowels on hand, they would work really well. And then what I'm going to be demonstrating with today are these shorter dowels. So this can be um, kind of a, not a super long time intensive project, but for sake of the video, I wanted to do a mini one for everyone. So I'm going to be using these six inch dowels. And if you have popsicle sticks, um, maybe even straws, anything like that to be kind of your cross pieces of the weaving. And then a few different colors of yarn. So I'm going to see um, if you have any questions throughout this or you want to wave hi, feel free to put it in the comments. I hope I will see them. And I'm gonna, I've got another camera view, so I'm gonna switch to a top-down view and um, tell you everything that's going on. Um, okay. I'm all, so here is my work surface. You can see this is a sample. This is kind of what I showed you. And then I've got my yarn. These are the dowels I'm gonna be working with. Also handy to have on hand is some scissors. And then this is my tip here. So this is just a little um, bucket. And as I'm using the yarn, I like to put it in the bucket so that when I'm like pulling on the yarn, it's not traveling all over the table. Uh, so that's going to be kind of over here. Now, um, the other thing as we're going, I'm going to be showing you a lot of different um, kind of tips and tricks to make yours clean. I'm going to be, you can see the front and the back. So this one I made like this was going to be the back. So this, I put all my different like knots on the back and then this was going to be my front. So it's a lot cleaner. What I'm going to be demonstrating is how you can get a clean front and back. So you can see this compared to this. If you know you want this to be the back and you just want to tie stuff, um, then you can just, uh, Kind of tie it like this but i'm going to show you how to do a nice clean so you have none of the ends showing on either side when we're getting started i have my two dowels right here and i think i'm going to start with this green color i am going to put my dowels together and take i'm going to keep my yarn just attached to the ball I don't need to cut a length or anything. And I'm going to lay that down and put my dowels on top of it. I'm going to try to put it kind of towards the middle as much as I can. You can see right here, we've got the string going underneath the two dowels and I'm going to tie it in a knot. So I'm going to take this end and just do a double knot. So one tie, pretty tight and then two to secure it. I'm going to go ahead and trim this end, but we want to leave the long end attached to our ball of yarn. And this ball of yarn, remember I've got this little bucket here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there and then it's going to just kind of sit there while I work with the piece. Okay, so we have this tied together. I'm gonna flip it over. And this is what I'm gonna treat as like my front. So this is gonna be my smooth side. 
we want to take our dowels and rotate them. So we've got an X. Now, let me show you that again. Let me see if I can get a little shade so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so we've got our dowels here and I'm gonna twist one of them underneath and sideways so that it creates an X. We still have our string in that we've tied onto the middle. And I'm gonna start by winding that around the X one way, and then I'm gonna wind it going the other way. And that's gonna help it stay in this X. So I'm gonna pick this direction first. So I'm gonna rotate this, try to get it to stay kind of in the middle. And I'm just gonna start winding a few times, just in the same exact like corner to corner. After I have a few in that direction, I'm going to go ahead and switch my yarn over to this corner and I'm gonna start winding across this way. So I'm gonna rotate this and start winding the opposite way. So we're just starting out with an X. And you can start to feel um, that, see my um, dowels aren't like snapping back anymore, they're staying in that X shape. Once you have that, again, just kind of check that this is in the middle and that your dowels feel pretty centered. If you need to give it like a little wiggle or something, now would be the time. And this is the main wrapping we're gonna be doing for the project. Uh, I have my tail, I was wrapping, remember this direction, and it's coming out from underneath. We want to be paying attention to the next dowel. So I'm gonna show you a few times and I'll kind of slow down and talk through it. You're gonna wrap over top and then you're gonna come back underneath. And then you're gonna rotate. So we're gonna rotate this way and then we're gonna go towards this one. We're gonna go over top, back, underneath. And I like to rotate each time. Makes more sense to me. This one, we're gonna be going over top and back underneath. This is the main um, kind of motion for the entire piece. We wanna make sure we're coming up from underneath this one and head over top of this one. So we're going underneath, over top. Rotate. And then we're gonna go over top, back under. Now, as we're going along, I'm gonna start speeding mine up. We wanna make sure as we're wrapping we're wrapping right next to what we've already done. So we're trying to um, make it so that we can't see any of the dowel and we're just doing a nice wrap and building up our woven pattern. Now, the, this, like I said, is the basic um, weaving technique we're gonna be doing, this kind of over and around. I'll show you, remember we're doing this smooth side. So on the back, you can see it's gonna look different. Um, and again, I'm saying front and back just because this is the way we're weaving it. We're looking at this side as the front, but uh, I'm teaching you how to make it really nice and clean so you'll be able to display either side. Okay, so after you have as much kind of green, well, whatever your first color is as you want, I wanna show you how to secure your um, piece of yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a tail, probably about five inches or so. And I want to get it to um, kind of secure onto itself. I'm gonna put this down and see if I can show you what I'm doing. So. I have, back it up a tiny bit more. So this piece of yarn, remember it was going over top and it was coming underneath back over this one. So I just loosened that up a little bit and this end, we trimmed our end, 
I'm going to take over this way, underneath, and up through here so that this end is going to be pulling through up towards the end of our dowel. So what that looks like, I'm going to cross it over top and then I'm going to pull it through right here. I'm going to take my tail through here. I'm going to try to pause at each of these so you can see what I did. Let's see, can you see that little tail? And then I'm just going to pull it up towards the end of my dowel and try to get it tightened all the way down right here. So what that looks like is I'm going to pull and try to tighten right there. And what we're going to end up doing is this tail here, we're going to wrap um, underneath the next color and then trim it off so that will be hidden. I think the next color I'm going to be doing, let's see, let's do this color. Again, I'm going to keep the yarn attached to my um, big ball of yarn and I'm putting my big ball of yarn in this bucket so that it's not flopping all over the table. When I pull it, it just stays right there. Little crafter tip. And when I attach my next color, I want to tie it on and I'm actually going to tie it on on top of this green one. So I'm going to go um, underneath and just going to do a regular kind of tie like you would start to tie your shoes. And that's going to be tied right on top of where that green one was. And again, we're going to take this tail, you can kind of adjust that knot so it's towards the back. And this tail here is going to go up this dowel underneath. I'm going to hold it right there and you'll see as I come around that'll get wrapped under. So remember our pattern, this here is going to just continue it. So we're going to go over the next one. This is the dowel we're on. We're going to go over the next one and then back underneath it. So over and we're trying to get right next to that green one without overlapping it a ton. We want to go right next to it. And remember, I like to rotate mine as I go. So then the pattern is kind of the same, that over and back under motion. And this is right where we had tied on. So when I go over, I want to make sure as I come under that I pretend that these ends are part of my dowel and I'm wrapping them kind of inside of the wrap. And this is what's going to make it a nice clean design so you don't have any of your ends showing on either side of your design. So I'm just kind of using my fingers to adjust that and we'll continue to adjust it and get them tucked inside as we go. So I'm coming around, going over and back under. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. You can see I kind of pause and hold with my, my right hand. I'm right hand dominated. So I hold with my right hand here and then I'm wrapping around, making sure those ends are wrapped right inside here and continuing to go with my design. Now I'm going to wrap once more around these ends and then I'm going to pause and trim them after I've done two more. So I'm going to pause right here because this is an easy place for me. I'm going to hold with my finger where I'm working and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim these ends. I'm going to get my scissors in there and try to trim pretty close. Remember we've already tied these on and tucked them in a few different um, of the wraps. And then I'm going to continue with my pattern over top, underneath, and there we go. I wanted to put on a few different colors for you, but I'm going to go kind of speedy with this one for a few more rotations. I'm going to pull a little bit more length. And when you're thinking about your design, um, 
I say pick at least like three colors. You can definitely do more, but three gives you a nice, um, you can kind of rotate between them. And you can think about doing different widths of your wrap. So see this one, I did just a tiny little center, kind of this big chunk of green, but then I started doing just a few wraps of this like orange color. So you can really um, play around and do a lot of different variations once you have, um, Kind of this weaving technique down. I want to show you the back here or what we're kind of viewing as the back. This right here is where we tied on and tucked under. So you can see that's really clean. You can come in here and if you want you can kind of push that teal one a little closer so you don't see the green under it. And then that way we have a nice clean design on either side when you want to display it. So I'm going to tie off again and um, put on one more color for this one. So, okay, I came here, I went around and back, and then I'm gonna pinch it right here and trim my end. So you wanna make sure as you're going that you're kind of holding wherever you leave off so that it's not completely loosening up and unraveling. So right here is where I want to kind of leave this loop take my end around and I'm going to come through the back so that that end is pulling towards the end of the dowel. So here it's coming from the back up through and I'm going to pull kind of down so that it gets tightened right against the edge of where I was working. And because we do this kind of self secure and then we wrap it, that's completely enough to secure it. If you have some craft glue on hand and you want to put little dabs of glue to feel extra secure, definitely feel free as you're going. This last color that I'm going to put on, I think I'm going to do, make sure that you guys can see it. So I'm going to do this darker um, teal color. If you've been around the studio a while, you know we have kind of this, or I have trouble figuring out how to name these like teal aqua turquoise colors. So I always encourage, um, feel free to put a comment in there of what you would call these colors. I think I'm going to call this one teal. Definitely feel free to correct me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put on my new color and I'm going to slip it underneath first. I'm going to be tying it on right on top of this last kind of loop of um, the aqua underneath it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my end. I'm just going to do like a tie. I'm going to try to do it slow so you can kind of see just like you're tying your shoes. And I'm going to get that right on top, but I am going to kind of spin it. So then it goes to the back. And remember, I'm just talking front and back as far as what we're seeing as we're working. So this is the end here. I'm going to give it kind of a tug. So we rotate that, um, that tie. And then I just gave it a really big tug. So then that feels secure. And remember these ends, we're going to be tucking underneath as we continue our wrap. So by now you've got the motion down. We're gonna be going over and back under and we're gonna make sure that these tails are inside of this wrap that we're doing. Just take your time and get that adjusted as you continue working your way around. One of the things I also um, have enjoyed being like reintroduced to these or trying these again is some of the history of it. So this is a traditional weaving um, process that comes from Mexico and that's why it's in Spanish. So Ojo de Dios, that's God's eye. And they are woven as kind of amulets of protection. So they can give in to travelers or placed in your home. I also love, again, picking all the different colors. I think patterning for me is really um, uh, part of the creative process that I enjoy. And 
it's a repetitive process. And I say this a lot about fiber arts is you learn one technique, kind of this weaving over, over, under, and back. And then it's a little bit of way to kind of zone out, um, have that little bit of brain break. Maybe your brain isn't swirling with so many thoughts as you're kind of working on following the process, working with your hands, picking your different colors. So I'm going to stop right here. It's kind of addictive, so I am going to do a few more. OK, got to stop. I'm going to show you how to um, stop and kind of add like a little hanging loop, like if you did want to hang it on your wall. Um, OK, so I'm going to cut a longer tail than I have been cutting. And I think I'm going to do just one extra wrap up here. And I'm going to do that same kind of self tuck in. So I'm going to loosen up this one that's coming around. And I'm going to take my end over and back through. And just kind of pull tight down on that. You can pull really tight. I'm kind of shimmying back and forth because I want it to tighten up, but I want it to be um, right along the back here. And I might just go ahead and do another one um, because this is our final one. We want to make sure it's secure. So that one's just another one that's um, looped around on itself. So I'm thinking about the size loop that I want. That feels, I don't need anything too big. And then I'm going to take this end and I'm just going to tie it right here. So I'm going to go underneath first. And again, find kind of my loop size and then take this end and tie it on right here. That same kind of tie we've been doing, just like you're tying your shoes. But I'm going to do one here and I'm going to kind of rotate it. Um, to the side and I'm going to flip it over to the back. Again, I keep referring to this as your back, but it doesn't have to be. If you like this side better, I'm just doing a double knot, pulling these really tight. So then we have our hanging loop. You can see right there. OK, so here's our cute little mini guy that we just made. It's got our hanging loop if we wanted to display it on our wall. And I hope this showed you guys how you can kind of learn that one weaving repetitive process. You've got the foundations of how to start with your two dowels and um, the pot pattern possibilities are pretty endless depending on what colors you like, the different um, stripes and patterns you want to create, as well as the size you want to create. So I did a mini one today for sake of demonstration, but I'll show you again the one I did last night. Um, is a lot bigger. So I would really love to see what projects you guys are working on. You can feel free to, on social, we're at Sunshine Craft Co. And then um, you can always find these project details. So there's going to be written instructions and some more step-by-step -step images on our blog. So sunshinecraftco.com. You can go backslash blog, or you can just find it in our menu navigation. I'm so glad you guys joined today. And I'll be looking back through any comments or questions. Um, and I'm excited to see if you guys try this along with me. Have a good day, guys.